A gold rush for Singapore, claiming more gold medals at the SEA Games and hitting the target set by the Straits Times. Drivers are feeling more pain at the pump with petrol and diesel prices soaring to their highest ever. Australia goes to the polls on Saturday in a general election race that is too close to call. Good evening, you're watching The Big Story with me, Hairyan Todiman. Subscribe to the Straits Times channel so you will not miss a single episode. Congratulations, Team Singapore, on hitting the target of 45 gold medals that the Straits Times had set for the contingent before the SEA Games started. This also means that the team has produced at least a third best away showing at the Games. Now, securing the 45th gold in Hanoi earlier today were the shooters Te Shui Hong, Teo Shun Xie and Amanda Mark in the women's 10-metre air pistol team event. It's Singapore's first goal in this event at the biennial meet. Another first gold medal as well in Siang Chi at the SEA Games after Elvin Wu beat Cambodia's Hock Kung. Now, as at 5pm today, Team Singapore have amassed 47 gold medals. Sports correspondent Sazali Abdul Aziz joins us from Hanoi. Saz, any last minute medals up for grabs this weekend before the Games wraps up on Monday? Yeah, hi, how are you Yeah, sure. Uh, Monday, there won't be any uh, sports uh, contested itself. Uh, but I think the big one for many Singaporeans is to see whether Low Can You can make the badminton men's singles finals on Sunday and possibly win Singapore's first. Gold medal in the event since Wong Shun Ket in 1983. Obviously, that has a uh, that's a win that has eluded Singapore for for decades now. Uh, and with Lo Ken Yu being uh, you know one of our top sportsmen recently, you know he's he, there's a lot of expectation and hope on him. So I think everybody will be watching that one really really closely. Singapore has done well in this uh, edition of uh, the Sea Games. Uh, some sports saw records that have lasted for years broken while some athletes achieved breakthroughs in getting a medal. Saz, which ones have surprised you the most? Yeah, you're right. Team Singapore has performed uh, excellently overall. Uh, there are some uh, sports who have delivered as uh, expected, like swimming with 21 gold medals. Uh, and there are also some sports where we, they were a little bit of an unknown. So we, we didn't know uh, how well they would fare. Or you know, for in, in the case of Xiang Chi, for example, it's the first time the sport is featuring uh, at the SEA Games and we delivered our first goal uh, just today, in fact. So definitely many uh, positive surprises. The most inspirational surprise for me, because I was there as well, would be uh, Shanti Pereira's 200 meters uh, women's goal in athletics. Seven years after she won her first one, I was there as well at the Sports Hub when she won in 2015. And she's been through a lot of struggles, a lot of self-doubt in the last seven years. So for, for her to cross the line at the Maidin Stadium in, in Hanoi uh, was a very, really, really special moment. So. Yeah, I, th I think that's a moment that will uh, inspire many, many Singaporeans. We'd like to wish the athletes once again a heartiest congratulations. And that was sports correspondent Sazali Abdul Aziz in Hanoi. Also making headlines today, prices at the pump in Singapore have hit record highs even though global oil prices are about 15% lower than in March. Now to fill up your car, a litre of 95 octane petrol will now cost as much as $3.20, some 7% higher than at the start of the Russia-Ukraine war. A litre of diesel has also risen up more than 15% to $3.00. So, where can drivers find the best deals? And what can they do to save on fuel costs? Now, here's Senior Transport Correspondent Christopher Tan. Okay, a lot of the prices are packed to the credit card that you own. For instance, uh, for 92 and 95 octane fuels, uh, if you own an OCBC card, uh, Caltex probably gives you the best deal. Uh, OCBC Voyage card, for instance, uh, 92, 95, uh, those are the best rates. Otherwise, I think you can go to Sinopec, but the drawback for Sinopec is that they only have three stations, whereas the rest 
the others like Shell, Esso, Caltex, they have a lot more, you know, two or three times more stations. So geographically, it depends on where you live. If you live near a Sinopec station, obviously Sinopec will give you the best deal. But if you're not, then Caltex with OCBC cards. There are many ways you can uh, save on fuel. Um, you know, drive your car in a in a, in a the economical way. Uh, the best way would be to be light light footed. Uh, have a constant light pressure on the throttle, uh, you know, so that um, the engine performs with the minimal fuel fed to it. Uh, instead of uh, aggressive jabs to the throttle, and then you find that you have to stop and you have to start again. Uh, that, that kind of driving, stop start, uh, the, that kind of driving is the worst, is the worst for fuel economy. Now, braking is also another, another bad thing, you know. You, once you brake, you actually have energy loss and then you have to uh, speed up again to catch up. So again, that stop-start stop -start, stop -start is bad. So a few pointers, I think there are a lot more you can uh, refer to Straits Times. Uh, I've written a lot about this in recent times. Uh, go, go read up. A major chip supplier to Apple, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, is considering building a new factory in Singapore. According to the Wall Street Journal, talks are underway with the Economic Development Board and the Singapore government may help to fund construction of the plant. Overseas, the global spread of the monkeypox virus is causing alarm, but experts say there is no need to panic. Cases have been confirmed in Europe, the US, Canada and most recently Australia. Symptoms include fever as well as a distinctive bumpy rash. Now that um, things are opening up again and people are starting to travel, then there's an opportunity for um, infectious diseases to be disseminated in different parts of the world. Um, Monkeypox has been increasing in recent years in West Africa and, and Central Africa. And so there may simply be more cases and more people who are incubating the disease in West Africa who are traveling. An expert panel in the US has overwhelmingly re recommended a Pfizer COVID-19 booster shot for kids aged 5 to 11. The booster should be taken at least five months after their primary vaccination series. The recommendation comes as infections and hospitalizations are rising across the US. Voters in Australia are heading to the polls tomorrow in an election that is going down to the wire. 17 million people who will decide who becomes the next Prime Minister. Scott Morrison, who leads the Liberal National Coalition, has been the PM since 2018. Anthony Albanese is the opposition leader, hoping to form the first Labour government in almost a decade. Our Australia correspondent, Jonathan Perlman, joins us now from Sydney. John, the polls suggest the election will be a fight to the finish. Who will prevail, you think? Well, the polls have had Labor leader, the opposition leader, Anthony Albanese, ahead for a long, long time, ahead of the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. The polls are tightening just as we enter the final moments of the election. Albanese is ahead, but it's worth remembering that at the last election, Scott Morrison came from behind. Nobody expected him to win, and he, he clinched the election at the last minute. Will he do it again this time? He called it a miracle last time, and people are wondering whether there'll be a second coming for him. It's looking difficult for him, but uh, anything is possible, and we could also end up with a hung parliament without a clear majority. Let's talk about a key election issue, the rising cost of living. John, how has that affected uh, both campaigns? It's a huge issue in, in Australia and it's been a huge issue in this election. Inflation is rising faster than we've seen in a long time. It's helped Labor, um, it's helped Anthony Albanese uh, because nobody likes to see the price of bread and petrol and just basic goods rising as quickly as they have. And 
we learned this week that wages have not been keeping up with inflation. So a lot of people are falling behind and a lot of people are doing it tough. And that opened up a possibility for Albanese to really campaign on that. The only issue is, is that other economic figures are good. Unemployment figures came out this week and we discovered that unemployment has dropped to one of its lowest levels in about 50 years. So overall, the cost of living issues are a huge concern and they've benefited Albanese, but Australia is still enjoying a strong economic recovery. Jonathan, thank you for the insights, Australia correspondent Jonathan Pullman. For more on the key issues in this election and what's dominated the campaigns, Jonathan's stories can be found on our website at str.sg forward slash Asia. Visit straightstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Hari Antodiman. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next week.